everybody this is warlord we're going to take a look at multi duplicate today uh, for making a, like a large pile of rocks and for this we're going to use the rocks that came with real illusion now I have my shader set to smooth shading because we're going to be doing a lot of duplication here and I don't want to slow things down so I'm going to use rock 1 rock 2 and rock 8 these are the individual rocks we don't want groups of rocks we just want individual rocks. Now let's select all of our rocks and let's go ahead and set the physics property on them while there's just a few of them. We want it dynamic and self mesh. And with those rocks still selected, hold down your control button and either move or rotate to create several groups of these rocks. Now it doesn't matter what this pile of rocks looks like here as it's probably going to be off screen we're just trying to get a group of rocks together now in order to use a multi duplicate and do it a little faster I'm going to bring in a dummy need to make sure we set it as dummy select the rocks and attach it attach all these rocks to the dummy now select the dummy and let's hit shift D to bring up multi duplicate and let's do four of them I'm gonna grab my rotate tool and rotate these around so we can see them now I'm gonna grab the move tool and kinda of pull them together a little bit again it doesn't matter what the grouping looks like. That's what we're going to get out of the grouping that matters. Okay. Now we've got our initial grouping. Let's go ahead and hit Control D to turn off or toggle our dummies. And let's raise this up. Select the whole group. Raise it up. Now we're going to need a physics floor for this. So we'll go get the infinite plane. And let's see what happens. Okay, somebody didn't get the memo, huh? That did not apparently get any physics set to them. Nope, they didn't. So all we have to do is come in here and set them the same as we would the others. Go back, do it over. Now you can also multi-duplicate this. It's it's however much your computer can handle. Just remember that it's like when you're saving something. You can attach it to the dummy, multiple objects, and save the dummy. Well, you can multi-duplicate multiple objects attached to a dummy as well. Now, let's see what happens when we add a collision object with it. Let's come in here to Terrain. River Ford. Now, I'm going to select that terrain. I'm going to convert it to a prop. We're going to give it some physics qualities. And static. And of course, we've got to give it a self mesh so we can use its contours. Now, the floor is right here for right now. So, that's basically what you're going to see when you do that. So we can come in here and remove the infinite plane and there you see the result now you could just grab all this and move it up
Now Jason J has an excellent tutorial on mass effects on using large amounts of rocks with physics and in fact uh, some of that is some of the most incredible work I've ever seen done with iClone <clears throat> excuse me with iClone you really need to take a look at that video now let's say we wanted to scatter these rocks out and leave them okay we'll go ahead and use the physics engine to scatter them but if you scatter them out and then come in here and reset your animation you haven't removed it you've reset it back to zero so if you want to scatter these out scatter them where you want them then you're gonna to have to come in here and select all of the dummies with the shift key right click remove animation now it's going to take a while to remove this animation and also if we do not turn off our physics simulation before we run it we're going to impart movement into it again I'll show you what I mean you notice now everything stayed where it was and we return back to first frame but we forgot to turn off our engine so now the rocks are sliding down again okay fine we go turn off our engine but now dead gamut we have movement and we don't want it this is where this comes in handy it will remove everything back to where it was. Now let's go one step further and let's play with the gravity. Let's uh, remove our z-axis gravity and let's add 9 to the x-axis. And turn on your engine. Don't forget to turn on your engine. okay now that's a bit too much so I'm gonna go back in and add a negative nine on the z-axis should hug the ground a little more and that's just playing with gravity you really need to experiment quite a bit but you can see how when you come in and individually remove the animation you can use the physics to scatter objects for you and scattering objects is something that may one day be built in as a scatter tool like we have in other uh, 3d applications but right now let the physics scatter it it'll put it to a random pattern and all you have to do is select and remove the animation and you can do that as a group with a group selection now let's see what happens when we use physics to scatter objects across a flatter terrain. That's a little more difficult. What I'm going to do is go back to my smooth shader so we won't have any trouble. And of course we'll need to go ahead and uh, what I've loaded is the grassland terrain. It's flatter. At least where we'll have our rocks at. And we need of course to convert it to prop. And then set up the physics. Activate the physics. Static. Self mesh. Now you can make a rock group, or maybe you save the rock group we made earlier. Because what, what this is going to depend on is this initial grouping as to how wide an area it covers. So let's see what happens. Let's see what we're looking at with this single group. Now you can see how that scatters out. Alright, I'm going to hit Shift D. We're duplicating 10 of these, 10 of these groups. I'm going to circle them around. I'm going to use the move tool to spread them out a bit. This is the important part of it. And after you've done this a few times, you'll, you'll kind of see what it takes. You may have to go back and do it once or twice. Okay, now, when we scatter it like this, we're going to get some scattering, but you can still kind of see the grouping. Especially if we were to look at it from above. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and let's play with our gravity. Let's reduce it to just a minus 0.8. Slow things down. Give it time to spread out a little further.
a little more coverage. Now you can also slow things down a bit with the world scale. Go to two. And I'd suggest letting it run until the animation dies out or you know everything is actually on the ground. Something's not bouncing up in the air. Of course, if it is, you can always go in there and lower it yourself manually. But you can see here, we have quite a bit that's still up in the air. So to run this simulation this way, we'd probably need to add a few more frames to it. But they might all settle down. Because these are up on the rise up here. Yeah, that's good enough. Now, again, in order to keep this like it is now, you will need to do a mass select of all of these rocks, right click, remove the animation, and now these will be spread out. It's not a perfect scatter tool, but it does work to some degree.